are not weak, my son. Father! The tragedy of Conrad Kerr's concluded on the planet of Sigwausa. Here he was killed by one of the Emperor's assassins, despite the fact he had known this was coming for a long time. He knew this because he had been tormented with visions of the future his entire life, and in fact the knowledge that one day one of his father's servants would kill him was a cornerstone to many of his murderous and depraved actions. So as the fated day drew closer, Kurz's insanity grew, and one of the ways this manifested towards the end was that he constructed an effigy of the Emperor out of corpses. This event is covered in his Primarch novel, and throughout the book he continually talks to the effigy and tells its stories of his life. He talks about how Conrad Kurz was weak and that is why he needed his alter ego, the Night Haunter. However, the most fascinating part of the book for me comes towards the end, when after the effigy is constructed, it actually responds. Now, giant, psychopathic, murderous elephant in the room, Conrad Kurz is kind of insane at this point in time. But Guy Haley, being the brilliant writer that he is, has written this deliberately so that you can decide what's going on here. If you want to say this is nothing but the ramblings of an insane Primarch shortly before his death, nobody can tell you that's not true. However, it is definitely not nearly as fun. I choose to believe it's the master of mankind to whom he speaks. And of course, how can this happen? Well, the Emperor has recently been put onto the Golden Throne and started that ascendancy that we know takes place over the next 10,000 years. And of course, Kurz himself is a tremendously powerful Psyche, as demonstrated by his presence. And so this effigy, to me, created a kind of focal point that allowed the Emperor of Mankind to communicate with his wayward son. And the other question you kind of have to ask is why would the Emperor do this? It is said if he could have met Kurz one more time, he could have cured him of his insanity, so you could say maybe he hoped he could change the Primarch's mind, but to me, I think he knew Kurz had to die, he knew the assassin must take his life, but he hoped he could give him some peace, and ultimately he had the chance to spend some time with his son at the end and who wouldn't take that opportunity. So this dialogue is wildly interesting and there are some massive revelations given in this conversation, so today we're going to have a look at some of the real highlights and what we learn about Kurz, the Emperor and the Primarchs. Why such hello words? No father wishes his sons to suffer, no matter what burdens he is forced to place upon them. <laughs> An apology. What's next? You will forgive me. Sanguinius warned me you might. Sanguinius, the great angel, also had the gift of prescience, which allowed him to understand much of Kurz's nature. Kurz thought Sanguinius an angel of light, whereas himself an angel of darkness. It can be argued that it is because of Sanguinius that Kurz died on Sagwausa, as during the Horus Heresy, Kurz caused absolute mayhem and slaughtered countless loyalists. He was captured by Lionel Johnson, however Sanguinius took custody of the prisoner and declared he would take the Night Haunter back to Terra to face the Emperor's justice. Yet Kurz never reached the Emperor. Sanguinius went to his brother one last time, and he told Kurz, taunted him even with a terrible truth. The Emperor may yet forgive the traitor Primarch. The great angel then ejected his brother into space, so Kurz could await the fate he was certain was inevitable. Because of their shared gift, conversations between these two Primarchs are always interesting. During the heresy, Kurz confronted Sanguinius whilst he was in his throne room on Macrag. But Kurz was not there to kill his brother. How could he? Two Primarchs who can see into the future are both able to foresee and respond to any future moves the other will make. It seems Kurz and Sanguinius will always fight to a stalemate. Kurz does however get Sanguinius to admit that he doesn't believe the scattering of the Primarchs and the natures of their homeworlds was an accident. 
Their surroundings match the Primarch's personalities too well, and there are many similarities between their Terran sons and the sons from their homeworlds. Sanguinius says that he is hurt by the lies of the Emperor, but he understands all too well that sometimes a father needs to lie in order to protect their sons, and he believes that the plans of the Emperor are for the good of humanity, whereas Kurz of course believes the opposite, and that even the Horus heresy is part of the schemes of their father. Before Kurz sets off an explosion and makes his escape, he offers for Sanguinius to strike him down. But Sanguinius doesn't go through with it, as letting Kurz live is punishment enough, and there is always hope, even for a monster such as Kurz. As well as having visions of his own death, Kurz also foresees the death of Sanguinius at the hands of Horus Lupercal, along with the deaths of multiple other Primarchs. In Prince of Crows, we see the Emperor and four of his other sons come to Nostramo. When Kurz meets the Primarchs, for two of them he sees that they will die, and for two of them he sees visions that he doesn't understand, but we the reader know to mean that they will one day ascend to demonhood. The most interesting vision from my point of view is the vision he has when he meets Rogel Dawn. Kurz sees him dragged down by a hundred murderers in a dark tunnel, their knives and swords wet with the warrior's blood. This roughly matches up with every Imperial Fist's greatest fear, that the Praetorian was overwhelmed by Chaos Space Marines on the traitorous ship, the Sword of Sacrilege, as he defended the Imperium against a Black Crusade. But have hope, Sons of Dawn, because as we are going to look at today, sometimes the visions of the Night Haunter are false. There was never anything to forgive. You acted as you were made to, but my plan was interfered with. Your insanity was not your fault, nor was it mine. Uh, lies! Everything was as you intended! Here, the Emperor is employing an ancient Terran parenting technique, essentially telling Kurz that he's not angry, merely disappointed. He had plans for the Primarchs. We know that the Emperor had a substantial portion of the Imperial Palace cordoned off as an area for the Primarchs to be raised. Whether you believe it was solely via the intervention of the Chaos Gods, Horus hopping back in time, Argul Tau hopping back in time, the Perpetual Erda trying to save her children, or some other reason, the Primarchs were scattered and the Emperor's plans counted for naught. But whatever your theory for the Primarch scattering, you'll never convince Kurz of this, as he believed that everything that happened was planned by the Emperor. Kurz even commands his sons to not intercept the ship of the Assassin. He tells his son, Talos, that he needs to die, and he will embrace death gladly, so the Emperor can prove him right one final time. The Primarchs didn't all land on equally hospitable or kind worlds. Where someone like Rebute Gilliman was found by noblemen on the planet of Macrag, Conrad Kurz's home planet of Nostramo was perpetually dark and suffered with a huge amount of pollution. The populace lived a hopeless existence, tormented by a ruling elite class and marauding criminal gangs. Overpopulation was not curbed by war, disease or law, but rather the staggering rate of suicide. Kurz had no parents, he forged his own path on Nostramo through his cunning and brutality. The oppressive darkness of his environment stripped him of all emotion, causing him to develop a twisted sense of justice. Then, after he was united with his legion, he grew to despise his own sons. They were the worst scum of Nostramo, the very people he had tried so hard to contain before the Emperor found him. In the Heresy, for example, he believed he had left them all for dead at Thramus, and he really didn't care, because he hated them all. Kurz's hatred even caused him to destroy Nostramo before the heresy began, once he learned that its corruption had returned. He was an outcast even from his brothers. Vulcan was captured by Conrad Kurz in the Horus heresy and very rudely refused to die. But he still taunted Conrad. He said that none of the Primarchs actually fear Conrad Kurz. They just pity him, tolerate him, because he is their brother. For what is there to fear but a petulant child raging at the dark? 
In fact, it's noted multiple times in the heresy when Kurz isn't killing, he actually really resembles a scared child, desperate for the attention he was denied. The impact of his homeworld was substantial. Kurz even posits the question himself, had he and Sanguinius switched homeworlds, would their loyalties also be different? Their lives were the toss of a coin apart. Corvus Corax of the Raven Guard is the other Primarch who shares many traits with Conrad Kurz, and even Corvus can't help but wonder what would have happened if he had landed on Nostramo. Would he have become the Night Haunter or a creature equally as vile? We do get glimpses that Kurz does possess some of the more standard Primark gifts as well. For example, Elva, a brilliant but unfortunate character, is unlucky enough to be the only crew member on a vessel that takes four years to deliver Kurz to Seguelsa. Over this time, Kurz tortures and mutilates the poor man many times, and yet Elva still feels compelled to follow Kurz in the end. If Kurz's homeworld moulded him to this extent, we can't help but wonder if the Primarchs were not scattered, or if Kurz had landed somewhere more hospitable. Despite his visions, was there a possibility that he could have become a mighty loyalist Primarch serving the Imperium? I am the Night Hunter. Light is anathema to me. Light is within you all. You are my sons. You are born of light. None of you are beyond redemption. Tell that to those who died. Nothing ever dies. Death is a state of transition. You have my forgiveness, comrade, whether you want it or not. Never! Nothing ever dies. What a line and not wholly out of place in Warhammer 40k. In fact, there are many references to the idea of a soul in the books and it's been suggested before that Primarchs can be resurrected or at least can live on in some other way. In the short story the board is set, the Emperor hints that maybe he will be able to fix Ferris Manus if he has enough time. Fabius Bio is a very famous example of someone who was able to clone multiple Primarchs, and they even share memories with their true versions. However, with some of the cloned Primarchs, there are questions around whether they have a soul, part of a soul, or no soul at all. Redemption for the traitor and even demon Primarchs is also still on the cards. At the end of Godblight, Gilliman speaks for the master of mankind and tells Mortarion that the Death Lord may yet be saved. However, for now, he must go back to the master that he chose. Can the War Master even be brought back as the Emperor implies here? It has always been said that Horus's soul was utterly obliterated by the Emperor, although there is a possibility that parts of it are still in the domains of the Chaos Gods. Kurz here questions whether he has any light in him. He was a creature of darkness. It was because of this that he grew to hate only one of his brothers, and that brother was Corvus Corax. Kurz and Corax were incredibly alike, but this similarity caused jealousy, and Kurz viewed the Raven Lord as naive, clinging to the beliefs of his youth. But the main reason Kurz hated his brother was because of Corvus's innate ability to remain unseen, especially in the shadows. It is said that Corvus does not disappear as such. An automatic scanner, for example, can pick him up, but the minds of others will simply ignore Corvus Corax if he so wishes, and in that sense he is invisible. Kurz, for all of his skill, can never match this ability. Where Kurz merely haunts the night, Korax owns it. The shadows belong to him. You made but one mistake, my son. From it, all the evil you have perpetrated springs. You chose to believe in immutable fate. Without choice, there is nothing. These gods that taunt us rely upon choice. The functioning of this universe depends upon choice. A single fate is one book in a library of illimitable futures. You read only one. Do you not see that you chose this? You chose to be fate's prisoner. Had you believed in your own agency, none of this would have come to pass. You made this happen. You chose to be the way you are, trapped 
manipulated, and sane. No! You sent the assassins to kill me! You want me dead! You determined what fate you trod. Your belief, my son, is nothing but an excuse for your own failings. No! Mm -hmm. I cannot be forgiven. After all I have done, where would be the justice in that? I had no choice. I had no choice. One of the most common questions fans of Warhammer 40k have is if the Emperor could see the future, did he know about the Horus Heresy, and why didn't he prevent it if he knew about it? And what the Emperor says here is a potential answer. Perhaps the Emperor saw the possibility of the betrayal, but that is not to be condemned in of itself. The Emperor is human of a sort, and knows the weaknesses of mankind and himself. Perhaps he thought, hoped even, that Horus Lupercal would not turn and the War Master would stay loyal. On Nostramo, the Night Haunter was a vigilante, basically an ever so slightly more insane Batman. However, Kurz had no qualms with killing people, but not just based on what they had done, but by the things they will do in the future. He says to Vulcan that nobody is really innocent, and even kills a woman who was going to commit suicide. I believe that the one mistake the Emperor is describing here is when the Night Haunter apprehends a young criminal named Karzan. Kurz has two visions. In one vision, Kurz shows mercy to the man. Karzan takes a look at his life and grows up to be a model citizen under Kurz's guidance. He converts other criminals and helps change Nostramo for the better. In his old age, he even tells Kurz, You made me. However, in the other vision, Kurz's hesitation affords Karzan the opportunity to ram his knife through the Primarch's side into one of his hearts. Kurz survives, but the boy flees and becomes a legend. By the time Kurz finally tracks him down, his influence on the criminal underclass has grown and thousands have suffered, both directly by his hand and by those under his command. Before Kurz finally kills him, he tells the Primarch, You made me a mirror to the light of vision. Kurz hardly contemplates which vision is true. There can only ever be one future, he thought to himself, only ever one. Shockingly, after he kills the boy, it is revealed that the knife had already rolled away, too far from Karzan for him to ever have grabbed. If Kurz had properly understood the impact of choices on our reality, so much suffering could have been avoided. This whole dialogue is utterly tragic. The passage ends with Kurz wailing and tearing apart the sculpture and then holding the remains, waiting for a voice he will never hear again. He is one of those characters where the more you read about him, the more sorry you actually feel for him. As we know, Kurz told his men to allow the assassin M. Shen and her ship to approach, and we have a recording of his final words to her. Even she would not escape judgement herself, as she would die at the hands of Kurz's son, Talos Valkoran. Kurz understood that the Horus heresy was nothing in the long run, for chaos will ever reign in the Imperium, and in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. And that is it for this video. If you enjoyed this content, please do consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button on the page below. There is also a Discord link in the description if you'd like to join. I would like to thank Voice of the Tiger for his amazing voice work in this video. That Conrad Kurz especially was really brought to life. He has got a bunch of Warhammer content on his channel, the link to which is also in the description. But thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time.